Hello there, I'm Thomas. The island of Sodor is a very special place and a very busy one too. What adventures will we get up to today? Let's find out, shall we? Today's story is about Toby the tram engine and Bell the fire engine and is called Saved by the Bell. There are many engines on the Fat Controllers Railway. They all have different ways of letting others know they are coming. Steam engines use their whistles. Diesel engines sound their horns. Then there is Toby the tram engine. He has a bell on him, which he uses to let others know he is coming. Even though it's not as loud as a whistle or a horn, Toby is very proud to use it on his journeys. It's his way of communicating with the other engines. But Toby isn't the only engine on Sodor who has a bell. Bell, the Sodor search and rescue fire engine, has a bell too. She uses it as a way to clear the tracks whenever she and Flynn have to get to a fire. But Belle also has a whistle to use just in case it is needed. When she's not racing to a rescue, Belle is happy to use it to say hello to all her friends. Toby and Belle are very happy and proud to have Bells on them. They think of them as really useful. One day, Toby was puffing on his way to Knapford Station to pick up the workmen to take to the quarry. But when he got there, he saw the back controller waiting for him with a group of children. Ah, oh, good morning, Toby! Good morning, sir. Um, where are the workmen? There's been a change of plan, Toby. I'm taking you off quarry duties for today, because I'm giving you two a special treat. A treat? Oh, what sort of treat, sir? I am sending you both on a trip to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. The children and their teacher are going to be learning about the Rescue Center and see all the different rescue vehicles. Oh, wow! Thank you, sir. But who will take the workmen to work? Don't worry, Toby. I have made an alternative arrangement. Oh, the shame of it. Good morning, Daisy. Glad to see you here on time. Yes, sir. But tell me, why do I have to take the workmen to the quarry? I'm too modern for this sort of job. Now, Daisy, we've had this talk already. The tracks to Harwick Station are closed due to track maintenance. So, whilst we can't take passengers by rail, we can still be useful elsewhere. Ryan has to stay behind to help with the repairs. This will be something different for you, Daisy. Just think, you'll get to work at the quarry. Going to the quarry is not the sort of job for me. I'm highly strong, and all this dust will go right into my eyes. <sighs> All aboard, please, children! Toby will be leaving in a moment! The children climbed on board Henrietta and the guard blew his whistle. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Daisy. Off you go, Daisy. The workmen are waiting. How undignified. Toby set off at the search and rescue centre. He was feeling excited about the journey. He never got to see the rescue vehicles that often. The Fat Controller was right. This is a very special treat for us. Just think, Toby. We'll be seeing the heroes who work there. I know. I'll tell you what. No Belle will be pleased to see me again. That reminds me. You never told me about how you both first met. Well... It's something I don't like to talk about, really. Really? Why? Because... 
Then Toby saw a group of people standing by a fence. They were waving to him. They look pleased to see you, Toby. Let's give them a ring of your bell, shall we? Yes, please, sir. The driver was just about to ring the bell, when suddenly... Whoa! Whoa! Ah, my hat! What was that? Hello again, Toby. Daisy! What was that for? I was just saying hello to the people in the field. But I was about to give them the ring of my bell. A bell? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Who wants to hear the sound of a worn out rusty old bell when you could have the sound of a jolly loud diesel horn? My bell isn't old or rusty. It's very useful. Toby's right. It's an important piece of equipment. It works very well. Nonsense. Bells are so out of date and very old fashioned. Bells don't work on the railway, not even on engines. You had better find a new way of communicating with others, Toby. Otherwise, you'll end up falling behind. Like right now. <laughs> <sighs> After a long journey, Toby and Henrietta arrived at the search and rescue centre. Belle and Flynn were there. They were pleased to see Toby. He stopped at the platform and the children and teacher got out to meet the rescue centre manager. Hello everyone. Who fancies a look around the rescue centre? Right then. Follow me, please. As the children and teacher followed the manager inside, Belle and Flynn noticed Toby looked upset. What's the matter, Toby? You look fed up. Oh, it's Daisy. She said my bell is old-fashioned and out of date. What? That's not very nice. She said a bell is not useful anymore and that a diesel horn is much nicer to listen to. That's nonsense. Bells are very important. Everyone has ways of communicating with others. I have my horn, which is loud. But there are other ways of saying hello to your friends. You and Belle have bells. And you also have a whistle, Mel. You should be proud of your bell. It's one of the things that makes you special. There are lots of places that use bells. There are bells in churches, schools, and... <gasps> The emergency alarm! Excuse me, children. I must attend this. Belle, there's an emergency at Elfbridge Sheds. Stanley has gone through the sheds and through the buffers. He's off the rails. Can you pull him back to safety with your winch, please? No problem, sir. Belle to the rescue. Belle is now on her way to the emergency. It will be her job to make sure everything is dealt with and made safe. Will Stanley be okay? Of course he will. Belle is a brave and bold engine. She's the right engine for the job. Belle will let us know the results when she gets back. At Ellsbridge, the workmen were doing their best to clear up but whatever mess they could. Stanley had gone through the buffers, and now he and the first few trucks were off the tracks. Harvey was clearing away the unhurt trucks and shunting them away. Oh, my poor wheels! And my brakes hurt! Don't worry, Stanley. Help is on the way. Bell will be here soon. That's Bell! She's coming! Clear the tracks! Clear the tracks! Hang on, Stanley! Bell is coming! Belle raced through the station and pulled up at the points to the sheds. Harvey was just shunting away the rest of the unhurt trucks. All clear for you, Belle. Thank you, Harvey. I don't like this at all. Don't you worry, Stanley. I'll have you and the trucks back on the tracks in no time. Belle stopped at the end of the track and her driver and fireman went to work to attach the winch. Stanley's crew helped too and the winch was soon connected to Stanley's coupling hook. Soon enough, everything was ready. Okay then, Belle. Easy does it. 
Belle took the strain, and as she started to pull, slowly and carefully, Stanley moved back towards the rails. Oh my! Keep still, please, Stanley. We cannot pull you if you shake and shudder. When Stanley reached the end of the track, Belle's crew who took off the winch and they coupled Belle up. Gently, Belle took up the strain and pulled Stanley back onto the tracks. With a jolt and a bump, Stanley felt the rails beneath his wheels once again. He gave a sigh of relief. Be you! Thank you, Belle! That's all right, Stanley. I'm glad you're safe. She did it! Belle rescued Stanley! Three cheers for Belle! The engines cheered and whistled for Belle, and the passengers all gave a round of applause. Belle gave a big smile. We'd better get you to the steamworks for a checkup, Stanley, just in case. Yes, sir, I understand. Soon Belle was pushing Stanley up the track towards the steamworks. Stanley couldn't help but feel bad about what happened. I'm sorry about my accident, Belle. The trucks bumped me and pushed me too fast. I tried my best to stop, but... It's alright, Stanley. Every wise engine knows trucks can be troublesome. But it's always a good idea to keep your wits about you when pulling trucks. Hmm. Then both engines noticed a group of people standing beside the line. They had heard about the rescue and waved and cheered for them. Let's give a round your bell, shall we? Yes, please. Here we go! Oh! oh what on earth? Hello, everyone. Daisy, what was that for? I was just about to ring my bell for the crowd. They were waving at me. Oh, save your breath. Everyone knows horns are far better than bells. Besides, who wants to hear the dull ring a ding of a bell anyway? Bust my buffers. That wasn't very nice. Ugh. Belle dropped Stanley off at the steamworks and set off back to the rescue centre. As she puffed back, she was still cross about Daisy and what she had said. That Daisy is very rude indeed. Belle returned to the search and rescue centre still feeling upset. Toby and Flynn were quick to notice Belle looking upset. Belle? Are you alright? Daisy was very rude to me. She ruined my chance to ring my bell at some visitors. Oh my! Ah, Belle! How did the rescue go? Oh yes, sir. Rescue successfully completed. Stanley is at the steamworks and being fixed now. Excellent, Belle. Well, I hope you all had a fun time looking around the rescue center. Thank you very much for showing us around. On the board, please, children. Now then, Toby, can you please take us to a nice picnic spot, please? Oh, of course I can, Mom. The children and the teacher climbed on board Henrietta, and everything was ready. <whistles> Off we go, Toby. Bye, Belle. Bye, Flynn. You hear that, Belle? They're cheering your bell! Oh! You see, Belle? Your bell is very useful and very special. Don't let Daisy get to your smoke box. Belle smiled at her friend, but wasn't sure about what he had said. She really wanted to find a way to prove that bells were really useful, but she wasn't sure how. Meanwhile, Daisy was having a wonderful day. She blew her horn at every possible moment. Whenever she saw a group of people, she would sound her horn. Daisy felt very proud of her horn and thought for sure it was better than a bell. Silly Toby and Belle. Fancy thinking bells are useful. So old fashioned out of date. Hello to you too. But 
Daisy didn't know that the photographer was shouting and shaking his fist at her. She had ruined his picture he was going to take. Don't keep blowing your horn like that, Daisy. Otherwise, you'll end up breaking your horn. Not me. That will never happen. Daisy pulled into Tidmouth Station to drop off her passengers. As she pulled in, she couldn't help but toot her horn to everyone. Hello everyone, you were all so lucky to have a Martin Diesel railcar like me come to see you. Especially one with a very useful and delightful diesel horn. Huh, I've heard better. I have a splendid whistle that makes me special. <whistles> Listen. Daisy was on her way again, she set off through the countryside. She passed a field full of holiday makers having their picnics. Daisy tooted her horn at them to say hello. Nothing like a toot of a diesel horn to get everyone's attention. Oh! Oh, Toby, I don't want to worry you, but... Trying to use your little bell on you. Whoa there, Toby! Bless my bell! Close by was a barn, and black smoke was billowing from the inside. The farmer was throwing buckets of water inside, but it wasn't working. It's a bonfire! Ow! Ow! Me barn is on fire! All me aim bells will be burnt! Toby and Daisy were shocked and worried. The children looked and saw the smoke. They were scared. Then, Toby heard a faint whistle in the distance. That sounds like Belle! It was Belle. She was on her way to Knapford to see the Fat Controller. Belle was still feeling upset with Daisy and didn't say much on the journey. Don't let Daisy get to you, Belle. It's best to let it go over your funnel. <sighs> Bell's close by. If I ring my bell, then maybe she will hear us and come to our rescue. No need. This is a job for a splendid diesel horn. I'll get Bell's attention. Daisy tried to sound her horn, but nothing happened. She tried again. Still nothing. Huh? What's going on? Ugh, now you've done it. Your horn is jammed. Probably been used too many times if you ask me. Oh no! Now what do we do? We'll use my bell. If I ring it loud enough, bell will hear it and then come to the rescue. Good idea. Let's do this. Toby's driver rang the bell as loud as he could. The sound echoed everywhere. What was that? That sounds like a bell. And it sounds like it's close by. It is a bell. It's Toby's bell. Something must be wrong. Quick, let us through, please. There's an emergency. And we think the bell is a distress signal. Uh, right. Bell's driver climbed back into the cab and they set off after the bell. They came to a set of points and stopped. It's coming from that way. Then that's where we must go. Come on, Bell. Hurry! Don't worry, Toby. I'm coming! The sound of Toby's bell got louder and louder. Then Bell's crew gasped when they looked up ahead. <gasps> Look, me helmet off. Do you see what I see? I certainly do. It's a bonfire bell. The sound of Bell's bell could be heard in the distance. Toby's driver put a hand on Toby's lever. We need to back up, Toby. We can't risk Henrietta or the children getting hurt. 
Toby knew his driver was right. They got back just as Belle came into view. Belle rang her bell and blew her whistle loudly. She stopped close by the barn fire. Belle! Stand back, everyone! Leave this to me! Belle's crew aimed the water cannons at the barn. And then with a whoosh, water shot from the cannons and onto the barn. Everyone watched as Belle and her crew tackled the fire. In no time at all, the fire was put out. The smoke disappeared and Belle heaved a sigh of relief. Phew! Oh, we've done it. You did it, Belle! You put out the fire! Oh, thank you, Belle. Thank you ever so much. Happy to help, but now I had better get back to Knapford. That's where we're going too. So am I. I'm afraid not, Daisy. You won't be going anywhere for a while. It's not safe for you to run without a horn. Want some help, Daisy? Later, Toby, Belle and Daisy returned to Knapford. The Fat Controller was waiting to see them. Belle, you really are a very useful engine and a clever one too. You attended to a fire without being waited to be told. You certainly are an engine who knows how to use her initiative. Thank you, sir. But I couldn't have done it without Toby's help. It's true, sir. Toby rang his bell to get Belle's attention. We followed the sound of Toby's bell, sir, and it led us straight to the emergency. Well, it seems you are a hero too, Toby. Your bell helped to get the emergency message across. You and Belle are the heroes of the day. And as a special reward, I think the pair of you deserve brand new coats of paint. Your bravery will not be forgotten. Thank you, sir. And as for you, Daisy, I think you owe both Toby and Belle an apology. Your diesel horn may be useful, but Bell's are very useful too. If it wasn't for Toby Bell, Bell wouldn't have been able to get to the barn fire. You were also lucky that Bell was kind enough to shunt you here. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Toby, and I'm sorry to you too, Bell. I guess Bells do have their uses after all. Yes, they do. You can think about what you've done whilst you're having your horn repaired at a day's or works. Ah! There you are! I want to work with you about my picture you spoiled! Huh? I was just about to take a picture of my wife when you made me jump and made my picture go blurry! Uh-oh. Hmm. I think I have just the picture for you, sir. Really? Oh, yes. Right then. Toby and Belle, stay right there, will you please? Come on, Don, quickly. Okay then. I guarantee this will be on the front page of the newspapers tomorrow morning. Smile. Cheese. Wow, what an adventure that was! Toby and Belle both got to prove that their bells were really useful after all. Steam whistles and diesel horns do have their uses, but bells are very special too. Next time you go out and about, keep a listen out for any bells you hear. You might hear one on a bicycle, or in a church, or even from a town crier. You might even hear the sound of jingle bells, but you only hear those kinds of bells at Christmas time. You could say today's story was saved by the bell. <laughs> I hope you had fun with us today. I'll see you again for another adventure. Goodbye, my friends. See you again soon.